Oh, hold on. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 195 3D Modeling for Animation for the spring semester 2022. Um, today, we're going to be working on um, displacement maps, but before we get to those, we're going to work on UV maps. Um, and uh, so we'll, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how they work. Um, up to this point, we've worked with projection maps. Um, we have the front projection, we have planar projections, we have cylindrical projections, we have spherical projections, and it's simply taking an image and projecting it onto a surface from X, Y, or Z coordinates, and depending on the kind of form that it's you know going about, like if you wanted to apply um, a texture to a soda can, then it would probably be wrapped around a cylinder, okay? So cylindrical approach, um, that would be a cylinder, cylinder map. Um, but again, they're all projection maps. So this we're getting into UV maps. So if you'll take note here, what I have done, and let's, I want to show you the difference between the two. And there's more than this, but reason for using UV maps, oftentimes over projection maps, especially if you're going to distort. Um, I need to pause real quick. Hold on one second here. Um, no, I don't. There we go. We're good to go. So <clears throat> you'll see in front of me that what I have here is a simple rectangle two-dimensional rectangle. If I want, I could make it double-sided or whatever, but I haven't applied a surface texture to it. I've subdivided it considerably because what I want to do is I want to distort it. I want to twist it, do something to it, okay, rather than just leave it as a flat plane. So I want to show you what happens when we use, if we choose to use a projection map as opposed to a UV map. So if you plan on distorting the shape in some way, turning it into a flag or a blanket or something like that, then instead of a projection map, you're going to want to use a UV map. Um, and especially, you know, for characters and things like that, UV maps work best. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and with the object selected, I'm gonna hit Q for, whoops, let me see what I have here. There we go, Q for new texture, and I'll name it flag. Okay. And we're gonna assign a color to it, and I'm gonna actually use an image to project on it, and so it doesn't really matter what color it is, because it will be replaced by the image in it shortly. Okay, and I'm gonna turn smoothing on, because I know what I'm gonna do in a minute. Okay, it's so just a blue texture. So let's bring up the surface editor. And what I need to do is right now, it shows that it's a principled BSDF. But instead, I'm gonna switch here and go from principled BSDF to, um, what do I want? I just want standard for the moment. So we can see all the texture maps that we've applied before. So under color, I'm gonna click T, and I'm going to come up here, and I want it to be planar. And um, again, we can go through a slight, re a little bit of a review to determine what axis about which it should be projected. And I have an image here that I'm going to load. So load image, and it should be inside here. Um, let me go back to desktop. Let me go to... Um, Content Fall 2021, and let's look inside Images, and here's my checkerboard flag, TGA file. Okay, now I have to decide about which axis I'm going to project it. The default axis is Z, okay, but watch what happens when I select Y. Watch what happens when I select X, okay, well, I want the checkerboard. And as I mentioned before, um, <clears throat> when you use projection maps, um, by default, um, maps tile. So they repeat again and again and again. 
if I don't want it to repeat and I want only want it to um, appear once as I do in this particular instance, then you need to select reset. Okay, but notice that it doesn't, it's considerably smaller than what I need. So then the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to use automatic sizing. So now it fits. Okay, now all is all is good at the moment, but watch what happens when I move the object around in Modeler. So I'm going to hit T for move, and I'm going to work in um, perspective view. And I'm going to move this about. And notice that the map is not fixed to the surface. It slides around. I don't know if you guys have um, experienced this yet. But that's part of the reason why I suggest that when you're mapping a surface that you only use in modeler, uh, you know, a place, you know, solid colors is uh, kind of a placeholder. And then when we get to layout, then to refine it. Okay, so that's what we want to avoid is that slippage. And also, the other thing is, is watch what happens when I distort it now. <clears throat> so if I come over here to the Modify tab, and let's go ahead, and I'm going to use something like Twist, okay? <clears throat> and from the side view, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to twist it. And after it's twisted, let's look at it in perspective view and see what happens here. And you can see that the again the the checker or the checkerboard pattern gets really distorted. It doesn't look at all like a checkerboard anymore. Well, that's not what I want because if I plan on using this as a flag, and I want it to ripple in the wind, or I want it to do whatever, I want to make sure that the checker pattern is fixed to the surface and bends with the rest of the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Let's bring it back so I can go ahead and there we go. Okie doke. So now what I'm going to do instead <clears throat> is I'm going to create something called a UV map. Okay. Now to create the map, what we need to do is I need to get some of this stuff out of the way. Down at the bottom here, you'll see that we have W in the lower right hand corner below my face here. It says um, W for weight, T for texture, M for morph, color, and um, I think this is, uh, I haven't used this in a while. This, uh, I believe, is a set. So I want to use the texture. That's where we go ahead and we create a texture for this. All right? So I'm going to hit T for texture. Come on. And I'm going to select plus. There we go. Now come on. Let me close some of these. So, oh, there we go. It's up here already. Um, I've got so much stuff open here. I, I can't see what's going on. So um, it says create UV texture map. Okay. Um, initial value is fine. We want it to be planar. It's a simple plane. No problem. We want it to be linear. And then you need to specify which axis it's going to be projected initially. We want it to be Z, just like the projection map that we used. Okay, we're going to make sure that it's set as the default UV map and make sure that we have live update. Okay, and we can also then go ahead and now create. Okay, so now I've created it. In a moment, come on. There we go. Okay, so now we can go over in the upper left hand corner. Instead of the top view, which really doesn't get us much, let's go ahead and switch to UV texture. And let's go ahead and hit A for all. And I don't want that because that's from another one that I did. Let's go back to the checkerboard TGA. Okay, so that's the TGA that's been applied. Um, let's go ahead and I've already hold on here. Let's go ahead and load image just to make sure. 
I'm trying to be prepared here and it's kind of goofing me up. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this image is loaded in here. There we go. So let's move some of these out of the way. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and twist it again so that I have texture. Okay. Now I didn't name it. I should have named it flag. Okay. So let me go back up here again to make sure I have the correct one. I'm going to go ahead and twist it and see what happens. So I've got twist selected. And let's see if it's if I've got the right one selected here. No, I don't. Okay, so let me undo it. Let's bring this back. I'm going to try again. I'm going to make sure that with this selected key for texture, add a plus. I'm going to name the texture um, flag. checkered flag, so I know which one it is. Okay, make sure it's projected along the z-axis. I want it planar, and I'm going to go ahead and create. So it's been created, so I can go ahead and close this. Now let's go back up here to the upper left hand corner i have got to move some of these other panels out of the way. And under UV texture. Okay i've got that set but under load image I don't want that. Um, I want UV texture. I want image. And. Want, I don't want any right now. So we have no texture. Now let's go back over to our texture map over here. And you can see that we have here, the, and that's why it wasn't loading. Um, I have the projection is planar. Well, I'm going to switch to UV. Okay, and that goes back to here. Okay, and we can see that, that it's just plain surface. Now we have to use an image with that. And I'm going to use the very same image that I used before, but I need to select which Texture map do I want to use now I did create that one named texture that I didn't I, I forgot to name the one that I want to use, though, is here um, it's textured flag or checkered flag. So now notice that it wrap it projects it on there. Now I can come back over here, and if I want to look at it in the upper left hand corner under UV texture. I can go ahead and instead of no texture, I'm going to go ahead and apply the flag to it, so you can see what it looks like. That's not that important at the moment. What is important, though, is watch now what happens when I go ahead and I twist it. Let's look at it. In the perspective view, and you can see that the checker remains. And it doesn't, we don't have the other side here, but what I can do with this is we can use it double sided. So our, here's our texture. And let's see if I can go ahead and use it double sided here. I probably should have done that from the get go. Um, that didn't work. No, no more fine. Um, there is another way to do that, though. Let me go ahead and um, undo that. So let's go back and change that texture. And I'm going to make this a double sided polygon. So there's a, a variety of ways that you can do that. I'm going to show you one that we haven't covered yet. And I'm going to go ahead and take what I have here and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it. And well, before I paste it, though, I'm going to flip what I have here. Let me go ahead and hold on. I'm going to move this out of here. I don't want that in there. I've got to turn that off. Turn off the text. There we go. So let me hit F for flip. I want to make sure that it's copied again. Command C for copy. It copies everything. Hit F for flip. And Notice that it's um, now on the other side. 
Now I can go ahead and hit Command V for paste. It pastes it in place. And so now we can see it on both sides, but it's actually two separate polygons. Okay, what I can do now then is hit M for merge. And notice that it will, we're going to keep um, one point polys. I don't need to really do that. I'm going to click OK, automatic. And we want to merge UVs. Okay. So now I have a double sided poly. And this would be, you know, again, if you have a flag such as this, if you're going to use an American flag or any other flag, and now let's go ahead and twist it again. So we've got twist selected. <clears throat> and it really doesn't matter what side of the flag I'm viewing. Okay, it follows the distortion. Okay, so that's, you know, one reason to use UV maps over simple projections. Um, it's also a way of turning in a one-sided poly into a two-sided poly and merging the UVs so that when we go back up here, you can see that they are merged. We have the checkerboard. So one of the other examples of, um, of UV maps is that I want to show you what happens that when you scan an image, very often the, the, <clears throat> the UV um, map comes with that object. So I have a flag selected at the moment, but I have this male figure that I've used in the past. Let's go ahead and select no image for the time being. I've used this guy inside my gallery here, so I want none at the moment. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him a little bit. Okay, so notice he's really nicely mapped. Um, the scanners that are available now that can do scans of human beings are pretty impressive. The quality is really amazing. Okay. Well, how did all of how did this image? It is a single image that's mapped onto him, and it's done. Excuse me. The UV map is developed at the time of the scan. So if we look at this, and I come over here in UV texture, okay, I've got the UV texture selected. Then I want to select over here um, the um, the actually male figure. And you can see that this is the map that is applied to this. This is all of his shirt, there are his pants, here's his face, there's his shoes down here, all over the, it's all over the place. Okay, but somehow when all of this is mapped onto here and it ra gets wrapped around <clears throat> his body, it looks like this. So if you're wondering, you know, and you want to go ahead and you want to use a scan image or you have the opportunity to have a 3D scanner or you want to download an image from uh, an image library uh, and it already has UV Mac um, textures applied, then this would be, this is how you can go in and do that. Um, we can come back and we can take this image and I can open the image in Photoshop and I can manipulate it if I wish. So if I, wanted, if I wanted to give him a mustache or something like that, or I wanted, didn't want him to have a beard anymore, I could erase that, okay? Now, to deal with these by hand is a little bit tricky, and that's what I wanted to show you next. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close these windows because they're getting confusing to me. And I'm going to close <clears throat> our character here. So I'm going to go ahead and close him. I don't want to save him. No, I don't want to quit. I want to close. Um, I just want to close. Close object. There we go. Come on. Don't crash, please don't crash. There we go. 
Okay, so now we are left with what I have here. And that's okay. And let me go back to the um, set of the mail. I'm going to go back to the checkerboard so you can see what's going on. So this time, let's go ahead and let's bring in another kind of character, just a head. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load an, um, a, a model in here that doesn't have a surface applied to it yet. And what we want to do is we want to create a UV map of it. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to go to, let's see. Oh, uh, shoot. Maybe I saved it in here under models, objects. images I want objects that I turn in head in here. Let me pause the recording just a minute and I'm going to download Karen head here. So it's a character head that I wanted to bring. So let me go ahead and pause the recording real quick. So I'm back. Um, I didn't get the head that I was looking for, but we have one. And let's say you wanted to create a UV map of it. So this is what we do, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and I have the top view and I have the back and I have the right view and I have my perspective view. So what I wanna do down here where it says T again, we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign. And I wanna create, and we'll call it head. Okay. I don't want it to be planar. <clears throat> he's closely, you know, like he's very close to being a cil cylinder. So I'll use that. And if he is a cylinder, the way his orientation is that I want it to be wrapped around the Y axis. So I'll select that for Y. And again, <clears throat> set as default UV. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to turn on live update right now, but I'm going to go ahead and create uh, click create. So he's been created. So let's go into the surface editor here. I'm going to close the create UV tab. We don't need that up. And here we do have a bunch of standards, principles. Um, I don't know which is which here. We've got a whole bunch of these. We're going to pick this one just for the heck of it. Okay. But what I need to do now is with everything selected, I'm just going to let everything uh, not hide anything, but um, go ahead and create the UV map for him. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q. And we'll name it. <clears throat> Using the basic texture here, name it head. Okay. Initial color, make them green. What the heck? Okay. Leave smoothing turned on. There we go. Okay. So that's our initial texture. And what I want to do now. As I don't, again, I don't want principled BSDF for starters here. I'm going to go ahead and just go back to standard. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit T, okay, for texture. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the texture axis is Y. <clears throat> I don't want it planar. I want it UV. And then the UV map that I'm going to use is head, okay. And I don't have an image for this just yet. This is where we would have to create our own. So now what I'm going to do in the top view is I'm going to switch to UV texture. And I've got the, the checkerboard, but let me go ahead and select none for the moment. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this so you can see what this texture looks like unmapped. 
You can see that part of his ear is over to the right. We can see that it's his mouth, an interior mouth and everything is sort of muddled. I should have probably removed from the texture the interior of, of his head, <clears throat> but you can see that it's really stretched out. It's like taking and skinning him and stretching it out, okay, onto a square format. So what you do with a square format now to create your own texture is that I'm going to go ahead and I just want to see that this UV map here. And this is where um, it's really awkward here with um, with Lightwave. So what I, I need to do in order to create my own <clears throat> is I need to, to look at it here in a single view. Let's close these other tabs. And I'm not concerned about anything that lies outside the rectangle, outside of the grid, rather of the square. And what I need to do for this, and I'm not gonna go through the steps, is to do a screenshot. Once I have a screenshot, then I can go inside Photoshop or any other um, imaging, you know, 2D imaging program of your choice and import this and put it in the background and then you can begin to paint on top of it and then you can bring it back in and this would be the image that you select so <clears throat> again if i were to bring up if we go back to um let's go ahead and close this so let's go back out of it and i already closed the model didn't i oh well i should have left them open well, let's go ahead and open them again so I'm going to go ahead and load an image, or load file, I should say. Um, load object, and I'm going to open them back up just so you can see. And I want you to see the files themselves. So if I come back in here, and I don't want that, I need to go back to my desktop. I need to go into content. No, nope, and you don't need to go there. I need to go back to desktop. This I can't remember where it is. And I have the file. I already downloaded him. So let's go into, yeah, I have it here. Here's the mail manager. Now you can see that we have, here's the OBJ file. This is what I'm opening. But you can see under here the PNG file, the ping file. I, let me go ahead and open, um, I'll open this in a minute um, and open it in Photoshop and see how we can manipulate it and manage it. I'm going to go back and open him first. Takes a minute for it to load. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it just was just taking a long time to load. It probably if There we go. Now he's loading. There he is. And in, in wireframe, you really don't see much. But let's go back again and let's um, look at the mail manager ping. So this is what it looks like again. Now I can go back here and let's open up Photoshop now. Photoshop I think is already open. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the file, file open. So you can see what it looks like in Photoshop and we'll go ahead and manipulate it and save it as a separate file and then bring it back in 
once again. So I'm going to go ahead um, under desktop. Let's go ahead and find here is the mail manager. Let's go ahead and open the ping file. So you can see what it looks like in, in Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and just decimate part of it to see what it does. So <clears throat> let's say, for example, because it's really hard to figure out where things go. And you can see with his pants, here's a pant leg here and here. This is the back. So this would be the back of his shirt. Um, it's easiest to figure out what we would do here. Let's go ahead and uh, if I wanted to put a pair of glasses on them, so to speak, they're not going to look like glasses, trust me. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go to my paintbrush. Here's my brush tool. And I just want to paint with some black and I want a nice round brush. Oh, come on. I don't want it so big. I want hardness turned up. Let's change it to black. Let's go ahead. There we go. Now let's see. So I'm just put, just going to put some glasses on. I'm not controlling this very well. Let me undo that. Um, wet. I don't want it wet. I want it dry. Okay, so let me try again. Just to show you how this works. And it's not working very well, but that's okay. Now watch how it wraps around his ear and wraps around his ear. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And I'll call it Mail Manager Ping 2. I'm really maxing out my computer here. Um, we're going to call it Mail Manager. with glasses. Okay, I'm going to save it as a ping in the same location. Let's click OK. Okie doke. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quit Photoshop. Maybe that'll free up some memory for me. Saving it in the background. It's not quite fully saved yet. See how slower it is? Everything is really slowing down. That's a good thing. Things are just, we're just about at the end here. So, okie doke. Let's go back to um, Modeler. 
and I'm going to substitute. I'm going to go ahead and load. So let's go back under our surface editor. And let's go ahead and um, click T for texture. And we're going to use the same UV map, but we're going to use a different image now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load the one that I just created. So this is, you know, you're going to, you would have to tinker with this and play with it. There are other programs that work better where you can actually go ahead and paint directly on um, the image. Um, you can do that in um, Blender. So let's go back out of here on my desktop. Let's go back down to the Nail manager. Yeah, and I'm going to put on the one with glasses. You can see how it maps on there. And there we have it. So if you wanted to turn your guy into a superhero, and give them a mask or something. This is how you would do it. And this looks pretty horrible, but you get the idea. I mean, it looks just as bad as when I painted it on there, but it's exact, it's mapped on there precisely. Okay, and notice how the side goes around to his ears. It maps it on really nice. Okay, so I think on Wednesday, what I'll do is that I will work on, um, I have a demonstration that I'll give you on um, displacement maps, and there's a little video that I want to show you as well, so that you'll know how to make, um, and it uses UV maps as well, <clears throat> in order to, um, to turn a simple object into something more complex, and specifically, um, with the displacement map to show you how to create mountains and different kinds of terrain and that sort of thing, valleys and whatever. Okay. So that's all I had to show you for today. Um, I will look for Karen head and we'll find a better head to, to use. Um, I thought I knew where he was. Okay. So are there any questions before we leave today? No. So those are UV maps. And it will change, um, it will update as you um, morph and change. Let me go back to the, there is one more thing here. Let me go back to um, the flag. This is an example. Let me zoom out. When you do assign a UV map, you have to do it early on. Um, because if you try to apply it later, after you've distorted it, it will look as bad as the original one. But since I applied it early on, I can come back here. And let's just look at this in the um, top view. And let's say I wanted to distort some of this. So if I come over here and let's use under modify, um, let's use the magnet tool. And let's try to let's move it over. So let me look at the top view. Let me zoom out here. Let's move it over here. Notice that I'm, you know, I'm distorting part of this now. But notice how the map goes with it. Now, had I done this at a different time, let's go ahead and move this out, move it in. Notice how the map stretches and distorts with it. So if I were building ahead, I would want to create a UV map early on.
And then as I build and I modify the head, um, the map will automatically change and reconfigure with it. Okay, but if you try to do this at the very, create a UV map at the end, it doesn't work so well. Okay. So that's a pretty good example of why UV maps work so well um, and why they're used pretty much as a default now in many things, especially for organic modeling. Okay, so if there aren't any questions, if you do, please let me know. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and we'll call it a day, okay? Yes, no. No, no questions, everybody's good. Okay then, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna pause the recording and you guys are free to leave.